How's it going everybody? Today we're going to be working on a pit droid and I want to make it nice and rusty and I know what you're thinking. There's no reason to let a good pit droid rust, right? Well, no. This guy's going to be a driver and I want him to match this other pit droid I have from an episode one three and three quarter inch figurine from the Star Wars um, episode one line. This guy came with a pit droid driver and I really like the way it's weathered. So I've got this one. He was super clean. Came with another pod racer. So he's going to get the dirty and griming treatment. You guys have seen me do this a little bit with my stormtroopers. And now we're going to see it done on a droid. This should be a pretty quick video. I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes. You're going to use green scotch bright. You are going to use some water and a must up paintbrush. I like to use that really raggedy looking brush for some weathering, adding, you know, texture and, and inks. We're going to use a burnt sienna ink, a burnt umber ink, a raw sienna ink, um, and they're acrylic inks for washes. Uh, some people put them in airbrushes. I don't. I use them with a brush. And also, we're going to go ahead and use some Gnome Oil from Citadel. I don't play miniatures, um, but this stuff works awesome on three and three quarter inch figures for weathering. So we're going to get this guy right out of the way. Here we go. Make sure you follow me on Instagram if you're not already at Famine Studios X. All right, we're going to get this head right out of the way, and we're going to use the scotch Bright. and I'm just gently dragging it over, making little scuff marks, taking the shine off of the plastic pieces. It's a really nice pit droid in great condition, but I want this guy to be weathered. He's for a special particular project I've been working on, and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about that in the video, but here I am just going over, getting any of the debris off. You can see I can feel it on my fingers. <laughs> And it's a, it's a weird sensation. So I just go back in there and make sure I hit the chest in areas that it's really going to be facing the camera or posed up in different areas. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do around the um, lens of the eye and around the brim of the pit droid's head. So I've got a bit of paper towel right here and I'm wetting it, kind of using it as like a very poor wet palette. And you can see I've already used that brush before for other weathering things, a little bit of residual paint in there, no problem. Giving this a wipe down just to get any of the debris from that scotch bright and sanding out of all the cracks. That way when we do it, it'll, it'll hold up. So we're going to get going here and start putting our first layer on, and that's some raw sienna. And there's some burnt sienna. I think I'm going to start with the burnt, give it a good shake, pop this bad boy open. And like I said, we're going to use this paper towel as kind of like a poor person's wet palette. Um, let it soak in with the water, get a little bit on the brush, and really work it in all over. I want to coat it. I want it to look like maybe rust has run down this thing for years, and it's been... and you know, pulled out of a junk pile and restored. I want it to have a story to it. And that's what we do with weathering. We're telling a story about how this thing has come to the way that it is, why it looks the way it does. Here you can see, I'm getting in the back of the joints, in the little clefts on the feet, um, in that backpack area, I guess the best way to describe it, up and underneath the pit um, helmet that it has there, its head, its droid head, its little droid noggin guess you'd call it making sure I get it around the neck area places that you might wipe it off but not get all of it around the top of the head I don't want to go too crazy towards the top of the dome because there's really no place for rust to come from there's no panel lines for it to leak from so I just want to have kind of like a residue there maybe something else leaked on it and again just going through the inside of the legs inside of the arms and now I'm taking that paper towel finding some of that wet spot folding it and I'm just going to give this guy a little quick wipe down all the high points leaving that residue that rusty uh, sienna color in the grooves in the panel lines adding another layer of character to this you know little pit droid Make sure you do a good job hitting those high points and you know, give it a once over and take a look. Everything looks fine for me here, giving it one last wipe and now we're going to switch colors. 
Now we're going to come in with some raw sienna, some of this acrylic ink, and just use it as a wash again. Go into those areas, add layers. You see how there's difference in the color, and it's going to blend a little bit together with the wetness on that palette, and that's fine if you pick up the difference of the color. And in those areas, some of that color is still wet. So now I'm just going over, getting the creases in the lines, brushing it over areas that I think rust would run down and trying to tell a story. I'm trying to tell that this guy has been fixed up, he's been loved, but he has lived in a junk pile at some point. He's, you know, made of scrap parts. Perhaps he's put together from other pit droids. We don't know. Um, his story will evolve eventually. And I'm just going to pick him up, take a look at him, and then fan him in a very fancy way. This is an advanced technique. I don't recommend everybody dries their paint washes like that, but that back and forth motion is really, that's a secret tip. Don't tell anybody where you learned that, okay? Keep that between you and me. Again, hitting the high points here, just giving it a quick wipe, and I can already see the layers developing, and I like what I'm seeing there. You know, I could stop here. I could be happy here, but... I like to take things a little bit further. I want to give them a little more character as I go along. So next up, we're just going to clean the brush off and get ready for our next color. We're going to use a matte black acrylic paint and some of that water. I've had this bottle for about three years, so it's on its last legs, but it's lasted me three years. That's three years of base coating things, three years of making washes, three years of painting signs, walls. It's That, that paint goes a long way. It's pretty pigment heavy, so I highly recommend it. Anything from Apple Barrel is a really good product. Plaid paints in general. And here you can see the color bloom on the paper from the black wash, and now I'm just picking out some areas where I really want dirt and grime to build up. And it's also gonna make the detail in this figure pop. It's gonna make all that sculpting work that those artists put into this toy back in 1999, maybe 2000, gonna make it really stand out, so. Now I'm just layering on the filth. Maybe maybe it's engine oil, maybe it's machine part oil or some type of space hydraulic fluid. We just don't know what's in there. And so I'm working it in all the cracks, letting it sit, getting that wet black paint, make sure I get it over top of the eye. Cause again, stuff could run on top of it. And we've all seen those pit droids in episode one, they pop down to a little guy. So who knows what gets spilled on top of it when he's in storage. Folding that dirty paper towel again and just hitting those high points and you can see already how it just sits in the cracks it sits in the arm areas in the joints where this guy would pivot and move around and it adds character and you see those layers build up between all the browns and the tans the siennas the raw siennas the burnt siennas the umbers and it just gives this dude life he's no longer just this tan and gray plastic piece he's got character to him he's developed and he's going to stand out when he's on a shelf when he's photographed and when he's in various pictures um on this project I've been working on, kind of like his buddy there, who also came from the same line. Now we're gonna use this uh, Nuln Oil, and this is for miniatures. Um, I like using it for, like I said, three and three quarter inch figures. And what I do here is give it a good shake, let some of that stuff pool in the lid, and I just use it right off the lid. I try not to go into the you know, jar too much and just Right here, I'm applying it on the joints that you would oil. Um, instead of hitting the panel lines, I'm actually putting it in places where oil would be used. You know, it's got a squeaky elbow, so you oil it up. It's got, you know, loose, you know, knees that need loosening up from all that rust. You just oil it up there. So picking spots where that oil would collect around panel lines, around the rim. Maybe there's a seeping leak around, you know, the top of his dome. The, the rim of his dome, I should say. And... Like I said, just picking those spots, the back of the knees, around the elbows, near that panel line where the neck moves, and putting that in there. And when that dries, it actually has a little bit of a gloss to it. Not as much as you would expect looking at how shiny and, and fluid that is, but just leave it on there for seconds. I leave it on there for seconds and I just give it a quick wipe over the high points and it lets it stay in those little areas. And I'm really starting to be happy with this guy. giving certain areas just one more wash before I do a final wipe down. And I'm not too precious about it. I'm not too particular. Just going over it, making sure that I've got the areas that I want with it in and the areas that I don't want it to have 
has it wiped off, and, you know, there he is. I'm loving the little guy. Stands up nicely on his own, looks good, lay him down here, set him up next to his buddy, boom. Now they both look like they are droids that are used for something. They both look badass, I think. I think that they, you know, look like they belong together, and they work together. Awesome little figure. Give you a bit of a closer look at him all done. I'm happy with him. And like I said, now he blends in with his buddy. They both look like they've come from the same scrap pile. Or maybe they work the same job. Thanks for watching, you guys. Take care. So this is the project that I've been working on. The sneak peek. I am building a spaceport. It's part of a little mental health project. Get myself creating again. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So that's the surprise for now. Hope you guys enjoyed everything. I'll see you in the next video. Be well.